The building you see in front of you, some might say it's quite splendid. You would say it's marvelous, imposing with its majestic simplicity and grandiosity. The one repetitive architectural element making up the elevations. However, many would be shocked and dismayed when they are told it is a fascist building. They would be mortified to know they admired something so tyrannical and oppressive. This building is the Italian palace of Italian civilization completed in 1937. Designed by Guerrini, La Padula, and Romano as part of the 1942 World Fair that was supposed to take place in Rome. Elements of fascist architecture include lack of ornaments, symmetry, and a centered plan. But what is fascist architecture? Many use the term fascist today to describe anything that is totalitarian and oppressive or anything that does not align with their beliefs. Fascism comes from the word fascio, which translates to a bundle of sticks. Fascism strives for extreme nationalism and aims to appeal to the emotions of the masses. Rallying the people behind the nation, the leader, and its soil can be done through art, media, and of course, architecture. In order to understand fascism and the Third Rome, we must understand the architecture of the past. The Italian Renaissance started with the Medici family wanting to showcase their power and wealth, and wanting to move away from the dominant Gothic architecture of the time. While Gothic architecture stretched vertically, trying to reach and praise the divine, and cast a sublime experience on its worshippers, Renaissance architecture was centered around humanism, reason, and elevating the Florentine state and the Medici family. The Vitruvian Man is a perfect example of what the Renaissance stood for. The center is humanism and man, while reason is the study of proportions, symmetry, and ratios, and an attempt to restore Roman glory. The ancient Roman pantheon, for example, has a centered plan, repetitive elements, and symmetry. Bramante Stampietto shares quite a few of these characteristics, but has a scale that caters more to humans rather than the divine. Similarly, fascists look to emulate this type of architecture. Using these elements, they used architecture to stir the emotions of the people, creating a strong sense of nationalism and devotion towards its leader. One great example is the fascist architect Giuseppe Terrani, and his infamous Casa del Fascio, or the Fascist House, completed in 1936 as the local office of the National Fascist Party. Now it is the headquarters of the Finance Police. The headquarters has repetitive elements, symmetry, simplicity, and the plan revolves around a center. Regardless of what these regimes strive to do and what they left behind, it is important to learn how they operated, their thought process, and how they used every aspect of daily life to influence the masses. History should be studied. Whether we like it or not, it should not matter.